folks, uh, Cornerstone Online, I wish that we were meeting all here together today, uh, but, but we'll do things a little bit different. Uh, there's nothing going to stop the Lord from moving in our hearts, and there's nothing going to stop God from doing something good in our midst. So we welcome you to church today. Uh, anybody wearing pajamas? <laughs> Any, yeah, yeah, I see you. I see you. That's awesome. Well, we just uh, want to worship God, we want to hear from His Word, and we want to be encouraged as we do so. Uh, let's pray together. Mighty God, we give you thanks for all that you do in us. Lord, even though we're not meeting in the, the church building together, Lord, the church is existing all over Gananoque and Leeds and the Thousand Islands, and we just give you thanks for what you're doing in our hearts. Lord, you have saved us, set us free, put us on a solid rock, and we just give you thanks for all of that. Father, as we meet together today, I pray you bless our time together, that Lord, we would grow closer to you, and that we would be encouraged by your, by your love, and by your tenderness, Lord, today. We pray this in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 Now you don't need to stand up when you're home, but I do expect you to sing. Sing along with us, lift your hands, close your eyes, sing along, worship God today as we sing. Here we go. Who are we? That you would be mindful of us. What do you see? It's worth looking our way. I'm 
Songs of praise, their eyes. Burn. 
church just a couple of announcements uh, of course church is different now we have to do things a little bit different so we'll be meeting online uh, as I said in the email I sent out earlier this week you can get this video uh, we'll be posting it on Saturday evening and publishing the links on Sunday morning we encourage you to tune in watch and then share it send this out put it on uh, your own Facebook feed email the link uh, to your friends and especially people that, that live in this area and don't have a home church. We want to connect with as many people uh, during, this, during this time. Uh, so, so check in every, every Sunday morning with us uh, for church. Also be on our Facebook as well. Stay tuned to our Facebook feed. We'll be pushing out a lot of content, uh, hopefully daily, uh, putting uh, verse of the days and videos and and just trying to keep that conversation going to keep us together. It's so easy where we're not meeting together on Sunday mornings uh, for us just to kind of do our own thing. And, and we need to stay together, stay as one cohesive group. Uh, so we'll do that. So again, on Facebook, be sure to comment and share and, uh, and make make this a part of your week and a part of what you do uh tonight we're gonna try something we've never done before tonight at 6 p.m that's sunday evening at 6 p.m we're gonna have a prayer meeting and we're gonna use a utility called zoom it's an app that you can get uh from the app store from your, your phone your ipad uh zoom meetings download that set up an account and watch for an email a link that we'll send out letting you know where to find us it's like a video conferencing program that uh, will get us all together and we can have a prayer meeting tonight it'll probably be just a little bit awkward a little bit different uh, but but hey we'll have some fun together we'll laugh about it and uh, just enjoy each other's company uh, going forward church programs are going to be uh, they're going to be canceled, so no, no prayer meetings, no men's coffee. Uh, Women's Connect has a, a breakfast coming up, but we're going to uh, shelve that and save it for a later date when it's uh, recommended that we can meet together. Uh, an offering. We're not coming to your home this morning. We're social distancing, uh, so we want to keep you plugged in uh, so that you can continue to worship God with your offering and put him first in the area of your personal finances. So we encourage you uh, to send in your offering either by mail. You can put a stamp on an envelope and uh, mail us your offering. You can get the the address for the church off the website or Facebook. Or you can also e-transfer. Uh, do it from your banking app or from your online banking. You can send that e-transfer to giving at the cornerstonegan.ca. Again, giving at the cornerstonegan.ca. And uh, if you wanted to designate you know, for a special uh, missions focus or, or whatever, you just put that in the e-transfer. Uh, oh, I feel awful about this, but the Easter egg hunt, we have to cancel that. Uh, cancel for now. There will be another big event coming, hopefully later in the summer. And uh, it will be warm out, we'll be outside, we'll have a big crowd, so the Easter egg hunt is canceled uh, for now. Uh, boys and girls, we can't dismiss you, because you're here for church. We, we can't send you to Power Kids, but Fiona and her team have been awesome. 
to put out a care package for all of our kids. And I think there's 60 plus care packages uh, being delivered this weekend just to keep our kids in the loop and, and together. So all of our power kids and our friends at the corner uh, kids uh, will receive this care package. And uh, so, so look for that on your doorstep in your mailbox. Uh, thank you to Fiona and her team. All right. Let us look into the Word of God this morning. Uh, get comfortable. Uh, if you're in the easy chair, you can pull that crank back, get your feet up. If you're on the couch, put your feet up on the coffee table. It's cuddle up with the dog or with your spouse. Whatever. Get comfy. Settle in. We're in John chapter... Uh, well, we'll be in John 16, but we're going to do a little bit of context. Put your finger in there. Get your smartphone app out. Uh, we'll be there in just a moment. John chapter 16. Now, let me set it up this way. You and I love it when things work out. When everything just makes sense, when everything is in this smooth trajectory and everything just works out. Uh, we like it when vacations, everything just happens. And we do the things that we want to do and, and it just happens. We like uh, TV, sitcoms, everything gets resolved inside of 30 minutes. You've done the show, it's good. I just started re-watching the Band of Brothers series. It's a World War II miniseries uh, from HBO that follows American paratroopers as they, they uh, landed in Normandy in World War II. I love that series. Love that series. I think part of the reason why I love it is because I know how it ends. The Allies win the war. There's, there's no confusion. There's no wondering. There's no, uh, you know, I'm not on the edge of my seat because I know what happens in the end. We're like that with restaurants too. And you know me that I got to be talking about cheeseburgers somehow in every message. But I have a favorite restaurant in Belleville that well, my whole family loves it called Revolution Burger. And they make the most fantastic cheeseburgers. I always get one. It's called the Bob Bell. It's uh, you know a ground beef patty, a large patty made with local, locally sourced beef, cheese, and bacon. There's a, an avocado spread, which makes it really healthy. They put their own homemade potato chips and their own homemade peanut butter. Yes, peanut butter. You have not had a cheeseburger until you've had a cheeseburger with peanut butter. And I know every time I go to Revolution Burger, the, the burgers, the fries, everything is it's perfect. It's amazing. In fact, I want one right now. I, I want one right now. Because I know, I go there, it's just going to work out. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, man. Because we want things to work out. We want things to make sense. We want things just to happen the way we expect them to happen. <laughs> we haven't had that in the last couple of weeks, have we? We've seen stock markets take a nosedive. We've seen stores close and restaurants are closed. Even the casino is closed. It's a good thing. But people are out of work. Paychecks aren't coming in. Questions about EI and the future. Kids aren't in school. We don't like this sense of, of we just feel uneasy. We're on edge. You see people out and about and they're stressed. There's nobody smiling. People don't chit-chat. Because everybody's worried. We wish that life would just move in this steady, easy going trajectory. We wish and we long and we hope and we assume that it's going to stay like that until it doesn't. In John chapter 13, Jesus is with his disciples and it's tense. This isn't the crowds following them. This isn't, you know, healing people and everybody is cheering them on. This isn't a good time. This is a, it's a tense moment. Jesus sent them ahead to find a spot to have the Passover together, the Last Supper. Jesus gets down on his hands and knees and he's going to wash Peter's feet. Peter thought, no, no, you're not, you're not washing my feet. That's not happening. He didn't get what Jesus wanted to do. And Jesus said, hey, unless I wash your feet, you can have no part of me. And and Peter's kind of shocked because he's been with Jesus for, for three years. I just don't get it, he says. Jesus starts talking about, about his betrayal and, and like how Judas would betray him. And he's talking about how he would die. And the disciples want to have nothing of that because that's not according to plan. That's not what they were thinking would happen in their, you know, their five-year plan. 
And Jesus says, hey, it's going to happen. It's coming down the pipe. This is the way it's going to be. And they, they didn't want to listen to him. They didn't like it. They shook their heads. They murmured amongst one another. And then Jesus says, one of you is going to betray me tonight. And they lost it. Who's it going to be? It's not going to be me. Is it going to be? Is it going to be? They were on, on, on edge. They were uneasy. It was not right. Peter is sitting there and Jesus looks at him and he says, Peter, you know, you and I, we've been close the last three years, very close. You're going to betray me or you're going to deny me three times. There's no way. No way I would do that. That is not according to plan. That is not the way it works. I will not do that. They were right on edge. This is not a good scene. It's not a good time. Jesus says in the middle of this, he says, hey, guys, do not let your heart be troubled, uh, but trust in God, trust also in me. He can feel the tenor in the room. He can feel the way their emotions are going. Thomas, we call him Doubting Thomas. Lord, I don't know where you're going. I don't know what you're talking about. Jesus clarifies that I am I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Nobody gets to the Father except through me. Philip speaks up, Lord, Show us the Father. If you just help us out, if you be clear with us, if you help us understand, then that would be good. And, and Jesus keeps talking, keeps sharing with them, keeps trying to help them, but they, they, they couldn't understand. They couldn't get it. This did not fit their plan. Jesus tells them, you know, I, I've got to go. I've got to go to heaven. They had no idea about that. i got to go. But when I go, I'll send the Comforter. I'll send the Holy Spirit. I'll send him, and, and he'll be yours, and it'll be good, and things will go over well, and the Spirit will point you to, to the Father, and it, everything will work out. And, but they were having none of it. Judas speaks up, and he says, Hey, well, why do you intend to show us you know, all, all this stuff? What's going on with the world? I... I didn't understand because they couldn't understand that that it's possible that things can go off the rails. It didn't sink in that that their their plan for this onward and upward trajectory and easy peasy and that everything would work out. We're with Jesus. How could things go wrong? It didn't make sense. Jesus keeps talking and trying to pour into their lives and encourage them. He's, he's saying you got to stick close to God. He says, this is John chapter 15, I am the true vine and my father the gardener. He cuts off every branch of me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes. Guys, if you want to do well, you got to stay close to your heavenly father. Stay connected. Grow in him. You can grow and you can develop but still they didn't understand. He dropped a bomb on them. Jesus dropped the bomb on them saying, hey, people are going to think less of you because you're with me. When I'm gone, they're going to persecute you. It may not go well for you at all. But don't worry, you got the Holy Spirit. He's just trying to drill this in. They would have none of it. The disciples never, as you read through the Gospels, they never got that Jesus would die. Like for us now, 2,000 years later, yeah, Jesus died. There's a cross, you know, in churches, and you see them around, and yeah, it's just a thing. People wear them around their necks. I get it. But they had no idea. It just did not work out. What does he mean? What's he talking about? This is not my plan. I don't understand what he is saying. Jesus explains it again and again. Eventually, by the time we come to the end of John chapter 16, uh, it says in verse 29, then Jesus' disciples said, now, okay, now we get it. Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech now. Okay, yep. We see that, that, that you know all things and we get that you don't need to have anyone ask you questions. This made us believe that you came from God. And Jesus says in verse 31, ah, you believe at last. And there's, there's an exclamation point that you can just imagine Jesus throwing his head back, hands in the air. Oh my goodness, you guys, this is taking forever. You'd think that Jesus would be happy that they, they got it. And it's, okay, we'll check that off the list. They understand. We can move on. And Well, Jesus does move on. He moves on into an area that they probably wish he didn't move on to. He says in verse 32, and 
Uh, I, I've mentioned this before, but when you see the word but in the text, it cancels out everything that happened before. Change it because something new is coming. I went to the store, but it was raining. That changed the whole idea of going to the store because going to the store sounded cool, but it was raining means I'm going to get wet. Jesus says, okay, you believe, but a time is coming and has come when you will be scattered. But a time is coming when things are going to go south again. You and I, we don't like that. The sitcom, we like that. We like that the show is resolved at the end of the show. Uh, Rachel and I used to watch Law & Order all the time. Loved it. Do you know why? Because they solved the case every single time by the end of the show. There's never any time when you're left hanging. It's just, you're satisfied. You feel good. The show is done. Turn it off and go to bed. Jesus says, yep, things are going to get difficult. Things are going to go south. But then he says in verse 33, he kind of turns it around. And he said, I have told you these things so that in me you might have peace. Okay, let's break this down here just for a moment. I have told you these things. What, what are the things? He said, I'll be with you. There's a plan. God's in charge, God's in control, God knows just what to do, you've got the Holy Spirit, you can grow and mature in God, you will be okay, God will look after you. That's the these things. I have told you these things so that in me you might have peace. We spend a significant amount of our lives trying to create peace in our lives. We don't like negativity. We don't like conflict. We don't like tension. We just want everything to make sense. When your kids were small and they'd be arguing amongst each other and fighting and rolling around on the ground, you're ready to pull your hair out, and you say, go to your rooms! And they go to their rooms and you sit down on the couch and ah, finally some peace and quiet. But how long does that last? Some of you parents, you know this well. You know, oh, these kids are cooped up in the house all day long. I don't have peace and quiet. What can we do next? And then Fiona comes to the door with a care package. Thank you, Fiona. Maybe at work, you work extra hard. You do more than it's expected. You do overtime. Just take on more responsibilities so that you can have that, that sense of peace in your job, that job security, that financial you know, the security that I'll be okay going into the future. So I'm working hard to make peace and to have this, this nest egg built up for myself. Or maybe you like to buy things and you buy the next thing or the next best thing or what's new and better and shinier. You buy that thing because it will give you a sense of peace in your life. If only I had that, then I would have peace. But invariably what happens? with our peace that we work so hard at as we lose it. The kids start fighting again. Jobs are not quite as secure as they, they once were. And that certainly happened this week. The financial peace that we thought that we had, we don't have it anymore. The sense of peace that we have over our stuff, it, we lose that as soon as the stuff gets kind of old. And Jesus comes on the scene here today and he says, I have told you all these great and mighty and awesome things. that God loves you. God is for you. God is with you. God will meet your needs. I have told you these things so that you might have peace. But he says that you might have peace in me. You and I, we can have peace with God. There's something about following Jesus that changes everything around. For people that are cornerstone people and, and you have a, a story of how God has delivered you and set you free and moved mountains in your life, you can attest to this and you can, you're cheering me on right now from your couch. You're saying, I know that. That is so true. I have peace in my life. Before I knew Jesus, no peace. I was chasing, chasing, chasing something all the time in Jesus I have rest. There's a, there's a verse in the New Testament that talks about how God's peace is a peace that passes all understanding. I don't, I, I don't know how it works. I don't know how God does it in our lives. 
It's a mystery, an absolute mystery. It's a peace that it just blows your mind. It astonishes you. It, it's like that thing that I wish I had a lazy boy cherry right now. I could just lean back, kick up, put the seat back and just... And have that peace that passes all understanding. We can't get it. We can't figure it out. It doesn't make sense, but somehow it's there. Jesus said, you can cast your cares on me, and I will give you rest. I love that. I love that. I love that I can take all the things that bother me and freak me out and scare me and give them to God, and he said he would carry my load for me. He would take my burdens and my fears and my worries, all the things that scare me, all the coronaviruses. He would take all the fear that I have over my job. He'd take the fear that I have over my family getting sick. And he said, I will take that on me and I will give you rest. I have told you these things so that in me you might have peace. And it would be awesome, awesome, awesome if Jesus would have just stopped talking there. But he didn't. He kept going. And it's frustrating because the next thing he says is in this world, you will have trouble. I don't want trouble. I am well acquainted with trouble. I don't want to see trouble come my way. I've seen what happens to my savings when the stock market dives. I've seen the people in the stores are nervous and worried. I don't want trouble. I've seen people on the news that are, are scared, freaked out because they, they have no certainty for the future. I, I don't want trouble. Trouble can keep its distance from me. But trouble, it's got my number. Trouble knows where I live. Trouble knows my name. It knows how to find me. It knows just what to do to me to pull me down. Jesus says, I know you. I know this world. And in this world, you will have trouble. But then the very next word on the page, the very next word is, but. Let's cancel out everything that came before. Let me give you something brand new. In this world, you will have trouble. Say it with me. But. But, but, I have overcome the world. Take heart, I have overcome the world. I love that. I love that. I can take that, I can plant that firmly in my heart and know that God knows me. God is aware of my situation. He is aware of the state of my life. He is aware of everything that is happening. None of this that's going on, like the stuff that we see on the news all day long, it's not a surprise to God. He's not shocked. He's not scared. He's not worried. Take heart. I have overcome the world. As soon as Jesus finished with this, he went out and he started praying. He prayed for himself. He prayed for his disciples. He prayed for believers. And in that next moment, very next thing, he was, he was arrested. Judas betrayed him, and he was arrested. He was taken. He was tried in the middle of the night before a kangaroo court by a judge that had already decided his verdict. He was taken away, beaten. He was forced to carry the implement of his own execution, his cross, all the way up the hill to the top of the city to a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. And there he was hung up for the world to see while they waited for him to die. And in that moment, the disciples thought that it had all gone off the rails. They thought that nothing was working out, that nothing made sense, that this is the worst that could possibly happen. We need to go run and hide because these authorities that did that to Jesus are going to do it to us next. So they went and they took off. A couple days later, after Jesus had been buried, they put him in a, in a tomb, rolled a big stone over the front of it, and the temple guards were standing outside just to make sure nobody messed with his body. A couple of, of women went to find Jesus. They went to prepare his body, to plant flowers, to mourn. You know what we do around, around gravesides. The world was over for them. There was no hope. There was nothing. But when they got to the tomb, they saw the stone had been rolled away. Jesus wasn't there anymore. 
Jesus can't be held back. He has conquered sin in the grave. He rose again on the third day. He appeared to his disciples a number of times. He ascended into heaven and sits now at the right hand of the Father. And do you know what the Bible said Jesus is doing right now at this moment today in 2020? Do you know what Jesus is doing now? He's thinking about you. He's thinking all about your needs thinking all about your fears, thinking about how life has not turned out the way you thought it would, thinking that you're scared and that you're worried, and he is taking your needs and presenting them to our Heavenly Father. He's praying for us. Praying for us. He is considering all the stuff that is going on in your life, thinking about the social distancing that we're doing, thinking about how your kids aren't in school, thinking about how you're worried about your job and thinking about how you're wondering how you're going to make ends meet, thinking that you're worried because you don't have enough toilet paper. He's praying about that too. Taking your needs to our Heavenly Father. This morning, as we wrap up, I want to challenge you with something. I want to challenge you to find hope and rest and peace with Jesus today. It's so easy to get off track. It's so easy to lose sight of what God wants to do in our lives. It's so easy to get distracted by all the storm that's around us. But in the middle of the storm, Jesus' voice cuts through and he says just what he told the disciples. I have told you these things so that in me you would have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Find hope in Jesus today. Don't worry. Worry's not going to do anything for you. You know it'll do something good for you. You go and you start putting a smile on your face. You thank Jesus for all of your blessings. You thank Jesus for, for doing good in your life and in your home. You thank Jesus that he is superintending over every single instance of your day. You thank Jesus that he is ordering your steps, that he is making your way straight, that he knows everything that's going on in your life. You thank Jesus that every time you pray, he hears you and he listens and he responds in kind. You thank Jesus that he's preparing a home in heaven for you today. Trust Jesus. Put him first. Don't trust in the wind and the waves. Trust in Jesus. Look up because there is no help coming from below. You trust Jesus. We're going to pray together uh, in just a second. And as we do, I invite you to pray right along with me. God's not going to be confused by all of our prayers. But I want you to know today, nothing to worry about. The world may be falling apart, but Jesus is alive. The world may be in a difficult spot and a lot different than it was two weeks ago, but Jesus is moving in your life. Let him solve all of your problems. Let's pray together. Mighty God, we give you thanks for all that you're doing in us. Mighty God, I thank you that you are bringing change in us. You're bringing peace. You're planting joy. You're planting love in our hearts and bringing us closer to Jesus. I thank you for that. God, I pray for all of our Cornerstone folks today. I thank you for, for each and every one of them. I pray you draw each one closer and closer to you, Jesus. God, I thank you that there's people listening to this service today who, God, aren't normally in church on Sundays. They don't have the hope in Jesus that we've got. And I pray, Lord, that you be speaking life all about them today, Jesus. In fact, today, if you're listening to me and you've never asked Jesus to come in, you don't have that peace in your heart, I want to pray with you so that you can have that peace in your heart. You can walk in joy and win the favor of the Lord. Would you do something with me? Would you pray after me? Pray this with me. You say, dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash them all away. Give me peace in my heart. Set me free from my worries and my struggles. I'll trust you trust you in Jesus name amen amen cornerstone folks people listening on the internet we love you we thank you for tuning in today God bless you God bless you mm -hmm.